Maybe. So, yeah. please, okay. go ahead. Good. So, thank you very much, Roland, for your kind invitation. And it's a great pleasure to, to see you again, also virtually. Uh, hopefully next year we'll actually meet in Uppsala, right? Uh, it's a conference he organized. I will have a slide at the very end. Um, so what I will talk about is uh, basically my main research and somehow I really converged to doing like uh, almost everything I'm doing includes some machine learning. So that's uh, uh, good uh, and uh, news and also maybe uh, it's too much sometimes. So, but what we try to do now is uh, make something uh, which is practical, can be used out of the box, and also look at some chemistry. So we start increasingly doing uh, chemistry research with, um, uh, with machine learning, so using machine learning as a tool. Uh, we also want to make it more easy access easily accessible. Uh, that's why we have uh, our package MLATOM, which we provide now on this uh, XAX uh, platform um, option for cloud computing. So basically you can run these simulations, which I will show on the cloud without installation uh, and the registration is free now. So it's, uh, you can actually try yourself these calculations. All right, so Shemen University for just a, a short introduction for those who um, don't know where it is exactly. So it's uh, a tiny island, but it has 2 million people. Uh, again, uh, like for Chinese standards, it's quite small, but uh, uh, it's uh, it's quite a lot uh, for us Europeans. And uh, uh, the city is in subtropical climate, so it's uh, very warm and humid because it's uh, near the ocean. Part of the city is also the continental part uh, of China. And we also have very beautiful campus. So if you're around uh, in China, it's very worth visiting it just as a tourist, which many people do actually. Uh, so it's like six hours difference, uh, as I mentioned, uh, and uh, university is very famous for doing chemistry. Uh, also globally, it's uh, in a very good uh, uh, ranking. Uh, so my group is uh, from 2019 in Shemen uh, University, and uh, I don't see many actually young people, but just in case I include it, if you have some uh, students who, who look later for postdoc, PhD, master positions, uh, they are welcome, especially if they like uh, uh, good climate and good food. Um, and uh, <coughs> I really need to, to start with uh, uh, advertising uh, our book, which we uh, wrote with many, many authors, and uh, I highlight uh, uh, people who you know from uh, Uppsala, uh, so I'm very grateful for uh, everyone who contributed and Roland uh, Ignacio contributed to this chapter on geometry optimization, uh, well, just structure optimization with Gaussian process regression. And there is uh, uh, a chapter on machine learning wave function by Stefano Battaglia, uh, hopefully I pronounced it, uh, <laughs> your name correctly. Uh, and uh, yeah, this book is now available, so it's uh, published uh, just uh, uh, almost, okay, uh, almost one month ago, yeah. And uh, yeah, it uh, includes, we did a very good job uh, in making sure that every chapter, every single chapter contains a tutorial for actually teaching students, uh, uh, not just theory, because theory, in my personal opinion, is completely useless. What we need to do, we need to teach students how to do practical, uh, uh, how to get practical skills, right? So that's why every chapter contains uh, tutorials like in uh, Python or other languages where you can uh, play with the code, see how it actually works in practice. And uh, it starts from very basic things, uh, from quantum mechanics to machine learning, and then it goes into more advanced things, also useful for specialists just to look up some references and so on. All right. Uh, I will talk about uh, mainly about uh, our new approaches which uh, really does what uh, I envision in uh, quantum chemistry. I really believe that uh, machine learning should become integ integral part of uh, quantum chemistry because it is a tool and it's very very good tool so why not use it. So it has advantages disadvantages but for what we want to do it's, it's a really great tool. Uh, that's why uh, this method uh, had in mind to, to do something that you can apply out of the box uh, and have high accuracy and high speed. Uh, I will not have a slide acknowledging all the people uh, who collaborate and uh, do the, the work. That's why I just 
uh, food uh, uh, <coughs> uh, the main uh, contributors uh, here and acknowledge them already in these uh, slides. Uh, so here Alexandre Sai was really helpful in all these developments and uh, uh, Pei did all the developments uh, uh, in this method. Uh, so if we think about uh, uh, how we can integrate machine learning and why we do want to do it, uh, uh, this diagram is uh, very, very simplified, but it shows uh, very nicely uh, many different ways how we can uh, uh, use machine learning. So first of all, obviously, machine learning is faster. Uh, and second, uh, it, uh, it's uh, according also to universal approximation theorem for neural networks. It can basically approximate any uh, function which we are interested in in quantum chemistry. And uh, its only limitation is basically training data, and then you you need to, of course, uh, play with uh, with the code to make it also uh, physically correct, um, and so on. But in principle, it's uh, it's a game changer because we can get uh, very high accuracy, like a very high ab initial level, uh, using uh, machine learning with uh, a bit slower um, cost than molecular mechanics. And we can also combine uh, uh, and improve uh, accuracy of existing levels, like semi-empirical or DFT, uh, even a initial, uh, to, to get them more accurate. And if you look at the pure uh, machine learning uh, models, uh, I, I really like to highlight this ani one ccx which is not our method, but it's really excellent in a way that it's one, one of the first uh, successful attempts to actually get something that you can use out of the box. Uh, and uh, our AKM1 uh, is different from it that we uh, improve some empirical method, uh, uh, but it's also general purpose. So now you may ask, like, if you have any one CCX, why do we need a AKM1? And uh, what is the merit of actually merging uh, two uh, approaches? And the explanation is that uh, for if you just use pure machine learning, it's still uh, very, very hard to, to get everything you want. Uh, so like it, it, this ani one ccx was trained, for example, on ground state, uh, energies, uh, forces, uh, and uh, only for closed shell species. So basically, it cannot predict charged species, radicals, excited states, and so on. Quantum mechanical methods, in contrast, are very, very transferable. So they can be applied for all these different scenarios which we are interested. And the IKM1 is basically quantum mechanical method but improved with machine learning. So that uh, makes uh, AIKM1 as transferable as quantum mechanics, and for many, many properties, it is uh, rich in quant uh, uh, high-level quantum mechanical, like a couple cluster. Uh, so our goal was to get for at least ground state, closed shell species, uh, couple cluster, uh, so CCSD, uh, T parenthesis uh, level, uh, which is kind of gold standard. It's obviously not the, the the most accurate, but it's uh, for at least organic chemists, it can be considered a gold standard method and it's quite good for what it uh, does. And uh, if you combine the AKM1, uh, so these uh, approaches and get the AKM1, so the speed is uh, like for C60, for example, it's just 14 seconds to optimize. It's an empirical speed, uh, while if you use couple class, it's 70 hours just for single points and uh, DFT will take you also much longer. Uh, so this is uh, uh, the composition of, uh, of this approach. Uh, it uh, actually um, combines uh, uh, semi-empirical quantum mechanical methods with neural networks and also dispersion interactions because it's quite problematic to get them right with both semi-empirical methods and neural networks. There are methods, but uh, if we, we just uh, opted to use the simplest options, which was uh, uh, available Grimes corrections uh, uh, already of D4 uh, generation. Uh, and uh, for neural networks, uh, there are also many, many different choices. Uh, uh, obviously, since any one ccx was already used for something very, very similar, uh, we decided to use any one ccx uh, uh, structure. Uh, we slightly modified it to adapt to our needs, uh, uh, but it's in principle is uh, uh, any uh, network uh, and any network itself is uh, modification of better perinello network uh, and all of them uh, and there are many other methods uh, in machine learning all of them rely on this decomposition of total energy into atomic contribution which you may argue uh, not the very the most uh, uh, accurate way but uh, it works uh, uh, for many purposes and uh, uh, there are some problems with this approach, and we'll see later. 
and uh, but by combining with some empirical method we hope uh, to eliminate uh, uh, problems of this approach uh, so like this any potential I will not talk about this you can uh, check uh, but uh, uh, what is important is that uh, this uh, to get really transferable and general purpose methods you need a huge data set and uh, we took this data set which was generated for uh, millions of different conformers uh, of uh, many uh, organic and inorganic compounds uh, uh, with active learning and for semi-empirical methods it's very very important to also take very good semi-empirical method and here we took uh, basically uh, uh, this was the state-of-the-art method in 2019 and uh, this uh, was uh, uh, my last uh, or one of the last works with uh, Walter Thiel Mm, so this uh, method is based on uh, Walter Thiel's organization corrected methods and uh, I uh, refitted lots of parameters uh, did many other modifications to, to make it more consistent uh, at the end uh, this method was uh, like uh, really uh, the state of the art at that time before IKM1 came into the scene and uh, it has excellent performance uh, for heat formation but as you see it doesn't reach chemical accuracy we later see that AIKM1 actually does it uh, very easily. Mm, and uh, it's uh, quite good across ke different chemical properties, including non-covalent interactions and vertical excitation energies uh, uh, and other properties. Uh, and especially for vertical excitation energies, uh, I need to highlight it because uh, the method uh, is much, much faster than TDDFT, uh, but accuracy is comparable. It has its limitation, for example, it's not applicable to read burst states and so on, but uh, it's, uh, it, it doesn't have any core electrons, uh, but for organic compounds and standard set of vertical excitation energies, it's quite good. Uh, now, how we did this uh, uh, EIKM1 method is by taking uh, this uh, um, ANI data set with almost 5 million DFT energies and forces, uh, and then we calculated uh, uh, differences between DFT and semi-empirical approach and we train machine learning on these differences. So that means we go this delta machine learning model. Uh, obviously DFT level is not what we want uh, uh, because uh, even semi-empirical methods approach for many types of calculations DFT accuracy. Uh, not for, uh, obviously not for everything but for, for many things. Mm, and couple cluster is uh, was uh, really our goal and uh, for this we don't have so many points and plus we don't have forces so we needed to make some kind of uh, trick to uh, retain the uh, transferability which we gain from these uh, 5 million points and uh, but get the couple cluster accuracy so for this we, we use transfer learning approach by uh, refitting uh, some of the parameters of neural networks uh, to get a better delta learning model which would uh, allow us to reach a couple cluster. So and then in principle it's just sum of uh, predictions by semi-empirical method plus uh, neural network corrections plus D4 corrections. Uh, now just a short introduction to, to delta learning uh, explanation what it is. So delta learning is uh, uh, very very simple idea so you, you have some terrible method like let's say hard refoc and uh, then you have very good method which is uh, full CI right uh, this is uh, H2 dissociation curve so nothing can be simpler uh, the thing is if you take only these training points uh, from full CI which are here in these circles and train your machine learning model it will fail to predict the minimum because it was not uh, in the training data so you did not see this pattern it's completely useless uh, to predict the minimum. Uh, but it's very accurate for um, interpolation. Now, UHF, although it ter has terrible accuracy comparable to machine learning, it has f correct physical behavior, right? So now we combine two terrible methods and we get a good method by basically learning of the difference. Because the difference between UHF and full CI, it has much smoother behavior. It doesn't have this uh, minimum here, right? So it just goes like uh, smoothly. Uh, again, it's like uh, at some points it's not that exactly smoothly, but okay. Uh, uh, for most of the parts, it uh, can uh, go smoothly, and that's why even if you train on these parts uh, of the potential energy surface, then machine learning can extrapolate to some extent to some um, 
and give some reasonable uh, predictions uh, of this correction. If you then put back this correction to UHF, UHF plus Delta machine learning model, then you will get uh, this uh, blue prediction, uh, which almost coincides with full CI. So very simple idea. Uh, now transfer learning is uh, very, very similar uh, that you use two more, uh, two levels. So we can train now a neural network on all this curve. UHF. So we can get perfect neural network model for this UHF curve. Uh, but now we fix uh, many parameters and only optimize some parameters uh, to fit uh, on these uh, like uh, points, training points uh, uh, from full CI. And uh, uh, this way we get uh, already also reasonable minimum after. Uh, so this is prediction of transfer learning, which is a bit off, but it's uh, now correct. So that, that was uh, explanation of these two approaches. Uh, so th this is all theory, but uh, I was claiming that it is good, uh, how good it is actually. Uh, so here we go to, uh, to this uh, big table. Uh, although the table is big, uh, uh, what is more important is to focus on colors. So if it's uh, uh, green, it's good. If it's red, it's bad. And we compare some empirical methods, DFT, some popular DFT, not everything, uh, with different functionals, double zeta, triple zeta, plus uh, machine learning, any one CCX, uh, yeah, K1 and uh, couple cluster. So like uh, the quick glance uh, shows us that this level of theory, couple cluster is uh, very good. It's all green. Uh, comparison to other methods as expected. It's not perfect either, but uh, it's quite good. Uh, EIK1 is also green for many points. Any one CCX uh, cannot be used for many data sets because, again, it doesn't work for char species and so on. Uh, so that means that EIK1 is more transferable. And uh, now we can zoom in to, to show like uh, uh, different uh, properties. Oops. Uh, so we have uh, ground state properties for closed cell shell species. And here IK1 almost everywhere green, so it's, it's really very, very good uh, because it was trained on this. Mm, so it really beats, uh, well, obviously some empirical methods uh, and uh, many DFT approaches. Uh, what is uh, very interesting is that uh, its ac accuracy for geometries is uh, really excellent. Uh, if you compare uh, to, to the available uh, experimental data, which are quite accurate, uh, because for small molecules you can get uh, accurate experimental data uh, from gas phase, uh, uh, raw vibrational uh, spectroscopy, and so on. Uh, so the agreement is is really very very nice, uh, uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, also many of these molecules, uh, uh, or at least similar patterns away in the training set. So this is basically couple cluster accuracy for many of these molecules. Uh, now for full I show it because uh, this is pure machine learning model. And as you see, this local approximation uh, makes a bit trouble. So the two bond lengths are the same with pure machine learning method. Uh, but the IK1 correctly predicts that one bond length is shorter than the other. So even for like uh, bigger molecules, it, it works. Uh, now I have a bit of uh, provocative title, which is uh, more uh, for uh, computational chemistry, people who use DFT and use b uh, most of the time. Mm, so this is uh, not for every DFT, there are exact DFT, uh, at least in theory. Uh, but uh, for b uh, like if you take some challenging structures, uh, like this uh, uh, cyclic carbon, then it predicts all the same bond lengths. So it does not uh, differentiate them. Uh, it is known from experiment uh, that they are different. From experiment, we don't know exactly what is the lens because they, they couldn't measure it. Uh, but from couple class, uh, it's, it should be somewhere in this range. And the AK1 is quite uh, close to this couple cluster result. Mm, now, this is another provocative thing because we usually think that uh, experiment is the most important uh, validation. It is true. If if experiment is also well done and uh, also if uh, it solves some, uh, it, it has good resolution and it's not always achievable. Uh, for example, for this molecule, the reported structure was uh, was like this, and triple bonds were like uh, had 1.192, uh, 
uh, so in this range. Uh, AK1 predicted this uh, bond length, and then I was like uh, very, very surprised why there was so big difference. Uh, and I was thinking, is AK1 so bad for this? And I was, uh, I looked uh, at the data, and I was pretty sure that AK1 should be good for triple bonds. So what I did, uh, I, I double checked experimental literature, and I found that it was well known in the 70s already that X-ray underestimates triple bonds because uh, uh, it uh, old ma models used the independent atomic model, and when they resolved uh, the structures, uh, the electron density is actually uh, shifted because it's triple bonds, so electron density is shifted to the middle, so they underestimate bond lengths. So now in our experimental collaborators, uh, they remeasured this with better methods and so on, and they actually get to the same uh, values, which is quite impressive. So we revised experimental values. Uh, and the AK1 is transferable in a way that it can be applied to char species. Uh, uh, its accuracy is not as good as for neutral species, and there are many outliers which are specifically not removed because it would not be fair. Uh, but if you remove outliers like H2 plus H, H plus reaction, uh, then the accuracy is much better than uh, you can uh, get from these numbers. And DFT, uh, like for some challenging, uh, especially like electron affinity is quite difficult. So then it's uh, also not much better. Uh, for non-covalent interactions, uh, it's uh, also quite good. So it's uh, comparable to, to DFT. Uh, for many properties like the standard S66XA data set for water, uh, clusters, it's especially good. So it's it's really very good for water. Um, and the anxiety states, it can do like, uh, it doesn't improve, we don't improve with anxiety states, so it's inherited from semi-empirical method. So it's exactly the same as semi-empirical method, which is on the range of uh, popular TDDFT approaches. Uh, now, since Roland told me that I have half an hour, so let me uh, basically just uh, t tell you that uh, we have uncertainty estimates in neural networks. And if you, so this is another example where you have heats of formation. And uh, we actually, if you compare uh, confident AK1 predictions for which uncertainty is very small with G4 approach, and the numbers are similar, but they're different from experiments. And again, maybe experiment is wrong. And indeed, we found a better experimental value, which uh, was closer to AIK1 for this data set. So we found a mistake in our uh, data set, uh, which was used for benchmarking and developing some empirical methods. So that's uh, already quite uh, good. And let me finish with something uh, like I really will go uh, to the very uh, end uh, uh, in order not to bore you, but uh, I cannot uh, just skip it. Um, Roland can ask this question because we implemented something similar to GAC, uh, but with uh, other things, so I will leave it for the question. Uh, oops, okay, that's now too many slides flipping. Uh, okay, here. I think uh, uh, this is uh, like, for, you know, try to make faster dynamics. And for dynamics, uh, we do it recursively, uh, as usual. Uh, and machine learning can speed up it by making faster calculation of forces, whatever, right? Uh, but it's still step by step. It's still recursive. Now what we suggest to do is basically have dynamics as a function of time. So just predict uh, what you want to predict uh, as a function of time. If it's nuclear position, we predict it as a function of, uh, of time uh, and initial conditions, right? And uh, another thing you can do, you can predict the whole trajectory in a single output of neural network, uh, so without actually propagating dynamics. And again, if you are interested in this, you can ask me questions, uh, but we did it actually for, for a real molecule. And if you compare uh, traditional MD and uh, our model, which we call 4D, uh, basic 4D because we, have, we predict positions uh, uh, of uh, nuclei uh, in a three-dimensional space plus uh, as a function of time, there's a fourth dimension, right? And the dynamics is kind of uh, very similar. Uh, and uh, this is much faster than traditional dynamics. So if you go to, uh, so this is my favorite project. That's why I just uh, couldn't 
uh, not to show you. And uh, here we have this, uh, after one nanosecond, it still keeps running and the molecule is stable. So uh, this is something we are playing with now. All right, so uh, that was uh, really, uh, oops, how to skip this. Okay, uh, so there is special issue for machine learning in physical chemistry where you can submit, uh, but I sh should finish with uh, advertising uh, your conference <laughs> basically uh, in Uppsala next year. And uh, uh, this is continuation of uh, our event in, uh, in uh, Xiamen, which was uh, last year. So I really hope that uh, we can meet uh, in person and also that uh, this will uh, uh, become a tradition uh, for, uh, for our community to hold this uh, symposium uh, by uh, annually. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pablo.